Okay. Good morning and welcome to this week's edition of Encompass Live. I'm your host, Krista Porter, here at the Nebraska Library Commission. Encompass Live is the Commission's weekly webinar series where we cover a variety of topics that may be of interest to libraries. We broadcast the show live every Wednesday morning at 10 a.m. Central Time, but if you're unable to join us on Wednesdays, that's fine. We do record the show every week and then it is posted on our website for you to watch at your convenience. And I'll show you at the end of today's show where all those archives are. Both the live show and the recordings are free and open to anyone to watch. So please share with your friends, family, neighbors, colleagues, anyone you think may be interested in any of the topics we have on the show. Um, we do uh, quite a mixture of things here at, the, at, um, at Encompass Live. Uh, the Nebraska Library Commission is the state agency for all libraries in the state. So we have things for public libraries, academics, K-12, uh, corrections, museums, uh, we're all over the place. <laughs> Basically, our only criteria that it's something to do with libraries, something libraries are doing, um, uh, uh, book reviews uh, that could be useful for libraries, mini training sessions, um, demos of services and products that we think might be of use to libraries. We sometimes have guest speakers come in and do presentations for us, um, and we also have Nebraska Library Commission do um, staff do presentations and that's what we are doing this morning. Today we have us <laughs> from Library Development, which I'm, um, I'm the host of Encompass Live. I'm also the uh, director of the Library Development Department here at the Nebraska Library Commission and we handle now um, all of the grants that the Nebraska Library Commission gives out. So we are going to talk about the grants that we have available um, that are all open right now to be applied for and are available for 2020. So you're applying now for thing money that you will get um, next year. Um, pretty much. Pretty much. Yeah. We're calling it 2020. an exception, but we'll hit that later. This is an exception? Okay. <laughs> So, um, well, I'll show you first. This is the Library Commission website. We're going to start here. NLC.Nebraska.gov is our main page. We have a blog there, lots of information about libraries. Over on the left here, we have a menu. And if you pop down to here where it says grants, uh, grants, funding, and e-rate, this is all about ways to um, get money. I guess is the <laughs> uh, ways you can get money, discounts, whatnot. Over here, we have the NL. This mouse is a little jumpy. There we go. The NLC related grants. And these are the ones that we either offer out here um, that we give out or ones that we are participating in ourselves. Um, so I'll mention just a couple things here first. Our library innovation studios project, that's a, that's a grant that we currently have going where we're putting all the makerspace equipment in libraries. Um, that's something you can join in with us and um, just announced we're going to have some more libraries available. Look at that if you're looking, if you want to have some of those makerspaces. We're adding nine new libraries, I think. Um, also, um, the Sparks grant, that was a grant that is, I think, a bit wrapping up at the moment. I'm not sure exactly the timing. That was uh, doing a connection between schools and libraries sharing internet service. Um, the other four grants here, though, are the ones we are going to talk about today. These are the ones that we are from the Library Commission giving out money to libraries in the state. And there's specific links to each of the grants we're going to talk about, but I'm going to jump right to the main uh, general page that lists all four of them that we have available. And we do have all four of our grants available this year. Yay! Woohoo! Everybody's here. <laughs> um, we, um, in previous years, we have sometimes had to not offer one. Um, due to money, um, timing, whatever. So we haven't always every year been able to offer all four, but this year we were able to uh, finagle it. <laughs> and um, all four of the grants that we do offer um, through the Library Commission uh, will be available. Um, they are, uh, some of them use state funding to provide the money and um, just one, the Library Improvement Grant, is LSTA federal funds um, that you use. Uh, there is a separate page here for each grant uh, with information all about them. We, um, oh, here's a little reminder to sign up for today's link of the slides. After this show, and I'll actually add that too now that I'm looking at this here, <laughs> after um, today's show as well, as I said, and, you know, the recording goes on to the Encompass Live page, I'll also update this link here on the main grants page to link to the archive. So if you're, um, you know, you're not here with us today, um, that's fine. You'll have a link right there to watch the show with any of the info um, that we're going to be giving you today um, about all the grants that we have. Um, 
So what do you, what else, General, do I need to mention? Well, I think you just need to do Yeah, all right. So I think we'll jump into each of the grants. Um, and I didn't, I, I failed to mention who's sitting here with me. Um, <laughs> nobody okay. knows. No. Uh, Sally Snyder is our coordinator of youth and children, children and teens, children and or teens, children, young children young and young adult know. library Something services. Like that. I think that's it. Yeah. Anyway, and Holly Duggan on the end is our continuing education coordinator. Um, and between the three of us, we run all four of these grants here, um, taking the applications, have a team, three for grants, evaluate and whatnot. Um, they are all open now for applications. So any one of these, we've got online forms there. I'm going to go through each one of them. We're not going to go through every single question and every single form and every single detail because we do have four different grants to talk about in the next hour. But we are going to just give you some general information about each one, a few of the things to um, be aware of, um, important things that we know people kind of maybe get confused, confused about or trip over when they're doing this. Um, and we have on here, you see, when they all became available, pretty much all the beginning of August, um, an email and a blog post was sent out then, when they are all due and when you will be notified um, if you did receive the grant. And we are going to do these um, on the web page here. We're just discussing this. They're in order alphabetically, but we are going to discuss them in order of when they are coming due because um, the first one at the bottom of the list, alphabetically, youth grants for excellence, the due date for that is actually the end of this month. September 30th. So um, don't I am, panic. You can don't do panic. It. You got time. Um, <laughs> and so I'm going to hand over to Sally here, and she's going to tell you all about the youth grant track list and how you can apply for those. Thank you. And I know that both Holly and Krista will jump in when I when I go off track or forget to mention <laughs> something important. So yay! Yeah. If you click on that youth grant link, which I just did, you're sent to the main introduction page uh, that talks about a number of things explain some things and if you just want to well I can't see what's me let's see trying to get to the FAQ okay lost you um do I try you can try the key yeah, I want to click on the FAQ link oh okay yeah you see the second paragraph is just one sentence and it says if you have questions about what is involved with the youth grants this is the FAQ there we go so here I have some basic questions that we've gotten more often than other questions. There's always some, there's always something that comes up I've never heard before. And so I'm excited for this year. So it's about you know what is it? Who's eligible? These are librarians who are in public libraries or um, the state institutional library um, for correctional. The correctional facility. So I was trying to see how yeah, I can get the mouse get that to work. Mouse to work all that. It's kind of going off track. Let's I just think run. it's better without the patch. Yeah. Okay, we'll just do that. Okay. So I just wanted to show you that this page is there. Wow. Well, we're gonna. Yeah. yeah. There we go. It's like I never ran a mouse before. <laughs> so this this has good information in it, and I'm not trying to encourage you to ignore it, but I suspect that most people just down because this is what I would do we all have limited time how much can you apply for well it's up to you what project you want to do but the minimum grant award is $250 so if you only want to buy $150 worth of, worth of stuff for your project that's great but either add something else to it or find a different source for funding oh. so there's information the these um, these little connections that say here, they, they shift you to the FAQ. So instead of having a whole bunch of text here and there, we just kind of send you over to the other place to learn about that. Mm -hmm. And there's some basic criteria. Um, I'll go through this a little bit. What we want is a, is a, at the beginning is, you know, how did you decide to do this project? We'll get to the page in a minute. Did, did parents, are parents asking for it? Are teens asking for it? Have you heard about another library that did this great thing and had this great response and you want to try it? Any of those are, are, and more are, are fine ideas. We just want to know, why are you doing this? And then we, as I put right all here on my notes, the most, thing, the most important thing after that are details, 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 because the biggest um, chance of not getting trended is, to, is if you do not tell me what it is you want to do. So we're going to get to the page here in a little bit, scrolling down some more, and down at the 
bottom. Here are some links. So again, there's a link to the FAQ. There's the, I, this just must take you back to the top. That's kind of fun. We have two forms in the youth grants, an online form. Well, they're both online, but there's the short form. That's if you're asking for $1,000 or less in your grant amount. And if you want more than $1,000, even if it's 1001 you'll need to use the long form. <laughs> so I'm just going to click on the short form here. And yeah, we have more instructions, because why wouldn't I? So basic things, who, you know, name. As you, as you um, fill this in, the box will grow. If you, if you just have a lot of things to say, probably not mm -hmm. in this section, selected category. It's not going to have a whole bunch of text in it, but other ones will. So um, don't worry about the size of the box. It'll grow as you type. Are these things where they could type in, like, a, get this all um, together and write it up like in a Word document and then just copy and paste the blocks of text over? Yes. And that, as a matter of fact, that okay. is recommended. Yeah. Type it up in a word processing document or um, that you have. Wordsmith it however much you want to. And then copy and paste in here because once you're here putting things in there, if you have to turn it off or go away and let somebody use the computer, it will all disappear. It does not save it for you to come back to halfway through. You've got to do yeah. this. you got to submit. Fill it all out in one shot. Someday we hope that will not happen, but right now it does. So mm. we don't want you crying. I don't <laughs> So write something up ahead of time. And right. you'll go yeah. here, see what the questions are you need to answer, then write up something in Word, and then come back here when you've got it all ready. And Copy and paste it in. And after you write it up in Word, show it to somebody who has not been helping you write it up. Mm. So it might be a board member or it might be your next door neighbor and say, does this make sense? Because they will catch things. The hardest thing is you know what you want to do and you put in the information, but mm. it might not be clear that what you really want is a gaming system or two. You need to tell them mm. that. Okay, so you've got your category, which might be celebrating books or team projects, whatever you're doing. And then goals. The more goals, it doesn't matter. <laughs> I've had people have seven goals in there, and, and that's nice. <laughs> but really, you only need one. You can have two. You can have... I just don't want you to sweat over, I, I should probably put in five goals so I sound like I'm really doing something, because I've received applications with plenty. And they all relate, but... They just need to be yeah. well written and, yeah. and like logical and uh, achievable. There you go. Not something you can't really you know, you and can measurable. Well, the goals have to be measurable. It's activities that have to be measurable. Is that right? Oh, you're talking about smart goals. Oh, okay. We won't get into that. That's okay. Just have um, some goals. But two, one, two, three. If you have seven, that's fine. I don't mean to disparage people who have mm -hmm. seven goals. It's just that I don't want everybody working so hard on that. Now here in section three, this is where the meat of your application is for the youth grant. This is what you really are going to do. So if you tell me that you're going to have four programs in the fall to celebrate the fall, and that's all you say about the programs, that's not going to work. If you're going to have four programs in the fall, tell me that program one is going to be carving pumpkins carefully. <laughs> <laughs> program two will be collecting leaves. Program three will be this and four that. Now you've told me that, but this application is a plan. So when you get to the part about carving pumpkins, you go, that's too dangerous. I shouldn't do that. Let's make a let's make styrofoam pumpkins or something like that. Fine. You're not set in stone on this one. Because you said, here's what we want to do. So right here is where you really tell me what it is your project is going to be and how you plan to carry it through. And then we'll just kind of zoom along a little bit here. When, you, when you're going to begin the project and when you think you'll be done, if it's not an ongoing thing, how many youth you think will be involved, and then the impact on the short form, it just says impact. I think the long form says evaluation. This is where you tell me how you will um, evaluate your program. It's everything from did kids have fun to uh, 
new families showed up at the library and got cars that we hadn't seen before. So, you know, whatever, whatever kind of impact you are hoping to make to put in, put in, in there. Oh, yes, and then the inevitable, if I receive a grant, I would make a presentation at a state or system youth event about the, what your, how your project went. And it might just be mm -hmm. five minutes to stand up and say, here's what we did and here's how it worked. So not necessarily an encompass slide, though it might be mm -hmm. an encompass slide. You could be on the show. Okay. <laughs> and then we get to the spreadsheet. So I said something about <clears throat> uh, gaming systems. So all you said so far is we're going to have two gaming systems. Hopefully you told me to. Um, we're going to buy some gaming systems for our team program. It will be part of this activity. Okay, so let's, let's just say we're going to put it under equipment. So that would be 600. Now so you need the system and you need the games. <gasps> now the you can't games. just buy a Switch, See? Nintendo Switch or a PlayStation 4 and have no games. It doesn't come with anything? Um, well, it depends on what you buy. Oh, okay. Sometimes See? they're packaged with a bundle. There are some online things that are free, but you do want to plan, you know, that's a good point. Talk to your team group if you have a yeah. team advisory board or um, just some teams that use the library and find out what they might like what to play. Yeah. So should we put that with all in the same slot um, under equipment or should we put the game under program material supplies or library material? This well, what's the difference? That's the thing. What's the difference between program material supplies and library materials? Isn't there a difference between one is like yeah. something that gets ex um, the library Program keeps? materials and supplies get used up. It's like okay. you know, yeah. construction paper for cutting out. Right. And then library yeah. materials library. is something that they then um, would still have after the yeah. thing's over. Be like if you were buying some books about sure. gaming or either fiction or nonfiction. Then the games the themselves will go under library materials. Okay. Yeah. How much do I put up there? How many games are you going to buy? Games okay. can average anywhere between thirty and sixty dollars for something new. Let's buy one hundred and fifty dollars so, worth. To, sure. I, I want my kids to like have fun. Three games, or if you get some used ones or older ones, oh. even more. Yeah. Thanks not very much. Well, get sorry. <laughs> See, this is, this is why you do your plan, right? <laughs> Write it all up before you start putting it in there. Do some research on how much yes. this stuff costs. I'm just throwing things off the top of my head here. <laughs> now, here's, the, here's an important part that I don't want you to miss. So you put $200 under library materials. As you scroll down past this, and you, you'll need to put in your local match. Right, so this I should is, have this, done the math ahead of time. This grant does require a match. Well, how come this oh, because I'm still in there. That's why it hasn't added it up yet. There we go. Now it's added it up to 800. So my local match, where's my calculator? Needs to be, let's see, amount being requested as a grant from. Oh, this is when you plan ahead of time how much you're going to need. Lots of times mm -hmm. people say, I want $1,000 because I want to do the short form. So I want my grant to be a thousand dollars, and then the rest of how I figure out what my local match is. Mm -hmm. That's when they call me on the phone and say, "Help, Help me with math." Yeah, and that's fine, and that's okay. Call me on the phone. So what I'm going to request from the library commission is, let's see if it'll because it'll tell you if it doesn't work. I'm going to ask for six hundred and fifty dollars from the library commission, and that means my match. I'm going for an all cash match because my friends group said I could have some money. money. So how come it's still zero down? Oh, there, there we go. go. Click on it. That might even add up right. Now down below the spreadsheet are these boxes that correspond to the categories above. I didn't put anything in contracted services, so I keep going down library materials. So I'm going to say I want. Five games or two gaming systems. Okay. Whoops, I can't type. That's okay, but if you said five games um, and name them, right? The teams have told you we want. I name some for me. <laughs> um. <laughs> Like the group, group one, like um, Mario Kart. Oh, Mario Kart. Okay, yeah, that's so a good. fun, multiple people can play. Mario Kart for, is that? Um, um, will be for the um, Nintendo Switch. Switch, yeah. 
Oops. Why do I have a tie? Oh, and then part with the K, but that's okay. Oh, it's, <laughs> it's with the K. Yeah, because they have. Oh, cart. Yeah, sorry. it's okay. All right. No I'll problem. I'll fix it. I don't care if things are misspelled. Okay, mm -hmm. so Mario Kart would be about if it's new or if it's used and in good condition. Thirty. Yeah. Okay. Been out a minute. It's been out. Yeah. So we'll say thirty. So lift them down here. This is how you came up with the number that you plugged in at the top. If you're going to buy this one, and I'll. Six, even six card. <laughs> and name them. I would type something, but yeah. So we said just give me an idea. Give me yeah. an idea. Okay, so then down here where the number 13 where the equipment is, here's where you type in one Nintendo Switch. Whoops. One. PlayStation 4. Okay, so now at least I know what items you're going for, but I'd like mm -hmm. to know what are you going to pay for this one? So mm -hmm. We had 600 there, so we're going to guess 300 each. 300 each. Yeah. There's deals out there now, it depends. You know, it drives open for what bundles are available yeah. to. You might get a game bundle in with that prop cost as well. That, and that'd be nice. Don't cheat yourself on this by saying, um, Target has these on sale this week. I'll put that number in. Oh. Because by the time you find out if you have a grant, they're not on sale at Target money, anymore, yeah. and you have, don't have enough money. So put in what you think you're going to have to pay, and if you get a better mm -hmm. deal, then you have more then, money for other stuff. Exactly. Yeah, put, in the, game. <laughs> put in the full going yeah. retail price of things, of any of the equipment, and, and for any of your the grants that you're doing. Yeah. Yeah. Because we can't, once we've announced the money, has been spread out amongst all these people. We can't get you more. Yeah. I'm sorry to say that. <laughs> okay, so it's not going to let me submit because I didn't say who I was or anything. But <laughs> down here at the bottom it says save and submit the application. That save only means you'll get a copy and we'll get a copy. It does not mean you can go away and come back because we've already said that. Okay. See, now it starts with the very top. Anything that's wrong, it'll say. It'll tell you. Start here. It takes you right back there. So if my math was wrong, when we get everything else filled in, it would give you a warning know. about that too. It would say, nice. "No, you don't have this right. Call Sally." <laughs> it doesn't say call Sally, but that's what you should do. Yeah, should don't do call either of us. I'll be gone <laughs> next week, Monday through Thursday, for the CSLP annual meeting. Mm -hmm. But otherwise, I'll be yeah. back. Yeah. Now, do you want to also mention uh, down if you scroll okay. to the bottom the um the extra signature page that has to be submitted oh, yeah. too. I was I jotted down this. That's a good thing. There is, mm -hmm, I thought I was faster. There it is. Okay. So there's an extra signature page. I can't see. Okay. Oh, now I see it. Ugh. That's okay. We're going to do this. You, you can see. What I say is that for the youth grants, the support documents can come in the mail or email with the next week. The deadline is for the application form itself. So if your uh, library director is out of town or your board president is, um, won't be back till Thursday, don't panic. It's okay. If you're doing this at the last minute. Yeah. yeah. Because we can work with that. Mm -hmm. If you just let me know, well, I can't send my signature page in until in two weeks. Is that okay? Yeah. Because the announcement of the grant isn't until... Wow, I should have written that down. November 8th. Look how it's right there. <laughs> Good job. We try to be organized here. Yeah. So, so this is a page you then have to um, print out and actually sign. And, and then sign. after it's actually signed, after we print it out and sign So we do need an actual signature of someone. It's not all electronic. We're still doing this one little bit. But then you can scan it and email it to yes. me after they've actually signed the piece of paper. So, so the children's librarian might be the project director. The library director has to sign. Library board different. president, and then the name of your library because sometimes I don't know who this one goes to. 
That's if true. it comes from the they will, this will come separate yeah. from the application, so we need to be able to match them up. To know that makes sense, yeah. For sure, because I can look you up. But it makes life easier for me. Yay. Mm -hmm. So my main point I want to make one more time. Oh, partnering. I meant to say that too. Accredited public libraries are eligible to apply for the grant. If you know the director or somebody at the nearby unaccredited library, you can partner to get together, like you want to do the gaming systems for teams. You can include them as a partner in your application. And I think, does it mention that on here somewhere? Oh, it probably does. Mm -hmm. Wait, there oh, here's oh, eligible. Oh. On the credit library, but then I think we do mention. We don't really say it there, do we? That's yeah. My bad. All right, but yes, um, partnering yes is is encouraged yes. with another library with a school. And um, my rule is, whatever you are purchasing. So if you're buying the two systems and some books about gaming, um, mm -hmm. some fiction books that have gaming as part of their Plotline, 51% of those items need to reside at the public library. The accredited and, public library, the one who's the actual right, eligible. You. Yeah. And 49% can reside at the other location. Or you might just say, well, we're sharing these. They're going to have a, a game day on Thursday afternoon, so they'll take both systems and the games, and then they'll give them back because I'm going to have something next week. And that's fine. That's fine. But... Um, as far as things that go into a permanent collection, like books mm -hmm. and, and other things, it needs to go at least 51% to the accredited public library. So that's, that's your in, is the accredited public library. So ask yeah. questions. Yeah. If you have any questions have any about questions? the youth grants, um, type them or in. Call me later. Um, yep. So youth grants are the first grant that is due at the end of this month, so September 30th. So if you haven't done one yet, get on it. We've got quite, like I said, we've got a, a bunch of money that we set aside for these this year. We did pretty good. Um, so we do have um, enough to do a quite a, figure, uh, quite a few grants, I think, to different places. When we were talking about partnering, I, would, I mentioned an unaccredited library. You could also partner with a school, mm -hmm. any kind of school. Mm -hmm. So... That's the only way. But with some other organization, I actually had <clears throat> last year an internship grant that the intern was shared between um, the Nyhart Center and Bancroft and the Public Library. Mm -hmm. So if there's some sort of organization like that that the Public Library would want to, um, um, a museum or a, so a site like that, a historical site, a um, zoo or whatever, um, Parks and Rec, you know, get creative. Um, but make that that your accredited public libraries are in to. Um, all of these grants, actually. <laughs> Absolutely. That's our, our the way everything starts off with. All right. So, are you good? I'm good. good. All right. Any That's questions? Question. Go ahead and type them in. We'll grab them. Um, I'm going to go back to the main page again because um, next our next grant up for um, deadline is the internship grant that I just mentioned. Internship grants, that's one that I do. Put the mouse over here. I'm in, in charge of those. They are due in October. And if you look at the dates, you'll notice we did one each month. So you, if, you're, if you're planning on trying to, and you can apply for all of these grants if you want to. If you've got something on your library that fits all four of these criteria, go for it. Um, also, I'll say here in general, if you've applied, I've had people asking me about the grants. If you've applied previously, like last year, yes, you can totally apply again this year for something else. For an intern to do something else, something else for a youth grant to do a different project. Um, for the CE grant, if you attended something previously, you want to attend what we're doing this year, yes. You're, we don't have any sort of rules about if you got one last year, you can't get one this year. I've had um, libraries apply in, a, in two or three phases where they have an oh, overall that plan. Oh, a big project, yeah, that takes one, multi years. Yes. Yeah. And that's okay, too. Yeah. You're not guaranteed that you'll get it the next year. You may have to wait another year after that, but it's okay to ask for it. Right. And that's good to mention because our grants are one year things. We don't do grants that are for um, grants that we're participating in, like the Makerspace are a multi-year thing, but ours are a one-shot thing. You're applying for something you're going to do, generally speaking, in 2020. Um, it looks like we did have something pop up here. Um, 
Oh, yeah, sure. Uh, Sally, can several several libraries partner for the youth grants? Perhaps the Sarpy County Libraries. That would be great. Yeah, yeah. not a problem. Mm -hmm. All you need is a, a letter from me. whoever's writing the grant would need to include in their support materials a letter from each library director saying yes, we're enthusiastically we're at, we're, we're, in, we're on board with this project. Yes, we're aware of it. We're <laughs> out there wanting to participate. Yes, it's perfect. Thanks. Yeah, absolutely. So as I was saying, each of our grants is uh, due each month. Um, September 30th is the youth ones. October 16th is the due date for internship. Then November 13th for library improvement grants. Then December 13th for CE. So um, you just have to worry about one at a time, not multiple ones at the same time. So the next ones up are the internship grants. Um, this is a program done that kind of pops over to a different page through our Now Hiring at Your Library website. Uh, internship grants, um, general idea, overreaching goal of this is to try and encourage high school or college students to eventually join the library field, to become librarians potentially. It's okay if after doing an internship at their, your library that they don't go on to library school. That's okay. That is not a requirement. Yeah. It's just to give them a taste of the kind of things that do happen in libraries, the kind of work they could be involved in. Um, this, so it is for high school and college students who have never worked in a library before. Um, so this would be you're trying to give them the first time. Now, if they have been a volunteer at your library, that's okay. The key is that they haven't been paid previously for any work um, in a library. Uh, but if you know, I, I, we know we've had some we've had some interns where it was a volunteer who was really really involved in, want, in helping out the library and was really kind of getting into that. I might want to do this as a career, then you give them uh, the opportunity of this paid internship. And that's the key here. This is a paid internship. Um, $1,000 or $500 you can apply for. It depends on how much time and money you want to be paying um, your intern. This one does not have any match required, anything. It's just we give you the money for you to pay the person to work at your library for whatever it is you wanted them to be doing. Um, Let's see. Uh, here's some information about the grant cycle. It's been open since August, due October 16th, and then you'll know by November 1st, and anticipated, as long as things go well, um, if uh, you are receiving it. Any project or program or whatever you um, will have them do be doing needs to be completed by November 30th of next year. That is our uh, the way the fiscal year works for the funding for this. So they can start at any time. You know, we give you the award announcement as of November 1st. You'll know. Um, generally, these will then start in 2020. If you have something that starts in December, that's okay. If you're really on top of these things, or even in November, if that's when you want it, um, that's okay. As I said, we call these the 2020 grants because that's generally where people, you know, they apply for things now in the fall for stuff they're doing next year. I think, were you going to mention something about that, that it could happen earlier? Or yeah, no? I, I was, kind of I thing. The thing is, because our grants are announced in no, November 8th, well, yours is going to be announced yeah. November 8th. Yeah. As soon as it's announced and you're told you have it, you can apply to us for the money. Yes. And yeah. you can start buying. After I hang up the phone, having told you, you got, <laughs> you got start buying stuff. If you're, if you're wanting to do a December project, and don't buy stuff before you hear the word, oh, because no. the dates are important on the, mm -hmm. on the receipt. But you can start buying then. And sometimes people do have a project Christmas, that starts a, a in A holiday December, thing yeah. or something. Sure. So, yeah, but most most of them are for the next year. Just how it works out, yeah. yeah. Um, this one also it works the same way. Accredited public libraries may apply, but we encourage you to partner um, with any um, a school, a museum. As I said, this is one we had last year um, with the Nyhart Center and the public library. They shared one person, and the um, they worked part of the time at the library and then part of the time at the at the um, center. But you can do that however you want to. Um, you can have it anywhere, five hundred to a thousand dollars. Generally, you either do five hundred or a thousand. But you can do a number in between that if your math comes out that you, you know, when you figure out how many hours they're going to work. Um, we do um, require you pay them minimum wage. Uh, what is the minimum wage in Nebraska right now? And we have information all about that on here. Um, some of the requirements: they, as I said already, high school or college student can never have been employed. Um, nor intern at a library before, um, volunteers are okay. Um, so for paying them, there are two different ways that you could potentially do this. Um, you, you can 
pay them a stipend where you just, um, they work for however many hours and then you just cut them a check for the full amount. And then the um, intern is required, is responsible for figuring out taxes and how much they have to pay. Or you can hire them as a part-time temporary employee, just like you'd hire any other employee where all the FICA and taxes are all handled by your um, HR or whoever handles all of that, just like anybody else who works at the library. And then the taxes are all dealt with that way. All of that then is part of that $1,000 we're giving you. Make sure that includes um, what you pay them as part of that, but their taxes are part of that 1000 as well. Um, there is, here's a link to the application form here. It also has a signature page, same thing as Sally's. I think all of ours have this, yeah. So you do the form and then you do the signature page. Um, the, the application here is on an online form, all the basic info of who you are, who's gonna be there, um, supervisor with someone different than the librarian or the library director, how much you want for them. Are you gonna have more than one? You can have more than one intern if you if you can do that, if you can, um, uh, have enough projects for two people, to, two extra staff people to keep track of, up to you. And then there's some information here on some preliminary plans and budget, how you're going to do this. Um, describe what they're going to do, scheduled activities, all this information here on the form. And I'm gonna go back to the main page and then you see the bottom here, it links you also to the signature page and then the submission. Signature page, in this case, it pops up with a PDF that you can print out and sign and then send your email to me. You can also mail it, you can fax it. it. However you need to just get it to me works fine. And we don't need the original original. It's as long as you've emailed or faxed or scanned it to me, that's fine. Um, mm -hmm. Let me go back to the grant page. We do have on here as well to help you with filling out those parts of the form information about proposed timelines, sample orientation plans, so things to give you an idea of what you could do with this intern. Um, and then there's an actual guidebook to um, internships in general that's done by the Department of Economic Development here in Nebraska. It's really helpful just for getting an idea of what you could do with your intern. I will mention too, we did kind of mention the makerspace grants that are, that we're, the makerspace that we have here, the Library Innovation Studios. Any library who's a participant in that will also automatically be given an internship um, an intern, an internship grant, so it's an auto, you don't have to apply for that, it's an automatic thing. So if you are a library coming up, or you are thinking about being one of our new libraries that we've opened up for applications, and you want an extra person to work with your makerspace with Library Innovation Studios, don't worry about this. I'll be reaching out to you to offer you that as a whole separate project. This could be a, another intern, and we did have some libraries last year who had their makerspace intern, and then a second one to do something else at the library work with a summer reading program, work on some archiving project, whatever it was they wanted to do. So that's our internship grants. We're pretty, pretty simple. Get an extra staff person, we give you the money to pay them. Nice. Yeah, I mean, I don't know, is there much more to say about that one? Uh, uh, yeah. We do have also, and I'm gonna show this here too when I go back to the main page. You'll notice you've got this grant recipients database link under each one of these. Yeah, if you're curious about who's received grants before and what they were for, you can look here. Um, you can look by your city, by a year, or if you wanted to see, show me all of the um, internship grants, like to the history of the program. And then you can see um, who, they, who got them, how much it was, um, these just talk about that they were, you know, so you can see if you're wondering if you want to talk to another library who's done this in the past and maybe get some advice, you can go here and find out. Um, for some of the other grants, like the children's and, um, let's see, what are we calling them now? Youth okay. Grants for Excellence. You can see a little description of what the grant was for, a little one-line blurb. So if you're looking for ideas or if you're wondering if something's been done, go here and see, oh, hey, look, somebody did this kind of thing. Let me talk to Ainsworth about this project. I'm thinking of doing something similar. Let me get some advice from them. Or if you just want to borrow someone else's idea and go with it, run with it yourself, that's fine too. <laughs> um, so that's something to, and then, um, you know, be aware of you're just getting some more information. 
Um, we're getting a little close to our time here. If we run over, we'll just keep going. It's all right. <laughs> uh, the other grant, the next grant up, is, if you have any questions, go ahead and type them in about the internship grants or about um, any of them here. The next one that I handle is library improvement grants. This is one that we did not do last year because we were short in funding, but this year we're able to do it. It's due the next month in November. So that's our, this is our November the 13th, and you'll know by December 1st if you got it. Library improvement grants, this comes from federal funding. This is generally things, um, it can be programs. Um, and this would be the youth um, grants for excellence would be if you're doing a program well, for youth, obviously, <laughs> children and teens. But if you wanted to do something, a program for anything above that age-wise, library improvement grants is something you could use for that. So this could be for a program for adults, for seniors, as in senior citizens, not senior teens. Um, anything you know beyond the youth grants, you can use this for programs. This is also would be for things like equipment uh, that you need. Wanna, we need a new microphone printer. We need a new whatever. Um, and we want to buy a 3D printer to have our own makerspace. Uh, we need to upgrade something. Um, the security system is old, and we need to update that. We want to put in a, a well. We had some library do um, electronic signage, like one of those big, like fancy oh, wow. signs, like you have you know, on the front of their buildings, things like that. Um, repairs, upgrades to your building, that kind of thing. Um, digitization project, I mean, it's, it's, it runs the gamut, really. And you can see here, it's based on some of these LSTA purposes, as they call them, the specific things. And these are, as you can see, you know, it's federal vague wording. <laughs> Facilitating access to resources, encouraging resource sharing, promoting literacy, education, lifelong learning. So these are things you need to think about when you're writing your in library improvement grant that you're, these are the reasons why you're doing it. And so you match up what you need to, what you want, the piece of equipment, the program, the upgrade to your building with one of these reasons that LSJA has for um, helping libraries. Um, this is available to also accredited public libraries. You are welcome to partner, just like the other ones. Same, same deal as I said before. But also, we have identified some specific institutional libraries as well that are eligible on their own. So, um, I'm not sure what's going on in Geneva, but yeah. um, it's an eligible. Youth, the rehab centers in Geneva and Kearney, the corrections facilities, um, the regional centers, um, all of these are, are eligible to apply on their own as well. So um, they don't, these organizations uh, do not have to uh, partner with a public library. We've, they've given them a little extra. This is the one grant that does have that kind of extra small list there. But accredited public libraries, if you're not on that list and you're not an accredited public library, you reach out to a public library and you can do a partnership with them for any of these things. Um, this is also a matching grant. It's the same thing as the youth one, 25% match, and at least 10% must be cash. Um, if you are doing anything internet related, because this is anything that's going to be online, this is money coming from LSTA, so they do require that you comply with the um, CIPA Act, the uh, Children's and Internet Services Protection Act. So you do need to be in compliance with that. Um, here's the application for it online application. And this has got a lot of, I like this, this one is because we're doing it with um, federal funding, it's a lot of check the boxes to match up with LSTA rules. So pick what fits yours, then you've got something where you can just start typing in. Same kind of thing as the youth one and the intern one. Any of these things that have big boxes to type in, pre-write it somewhere else on Word, some, something like that, and then copy and paste it into here afterwards. Intent, what activities you're going to be doing. So you can see here, this um, just you know, check off the right boxes. Hmm? It is a lot of checking. It is. It's, it's kind of pre done a lot. There's a lot of these things that, because this is federal funding, they want to know certain things when we do our report to them afterwards. So this is how we gather that from you guys. Um, and then somewhere near the end, should have, there we go, your budget where you can put in. Same thing as salaries. I'm not going to go through it here because it's going to be the same example. You enter the money. It does the math for you and figures it all out. If you have questions, definitely give me a call. And um, you do have to with this one, if um, do the library improvement internet safety certification, this, because it has to be in compliance with SIPA. If you're doing anything online related, there's a little extra form there. Um, And then you just send it, it all comes through to me. Yes, I want to leave. So it's going to pop this up because if you haven't submitted it yet, there's things blank there and it thinks you want to. You didn't do your form yet. Please do. 
Um, so this one, I would say definitely, because it does have a lot of these LSTA rules and things, take a look at the list of the previous ones that people have done, because this is pretty much all across the board. There's pretty much anything and everything you could potentially apply for for this. It's, it's really broad. Um, just think of anything you need done at your library and apply for it here. Anything that's for the youth and children, use the youth grant to apply for that one. Um, there will be a report at the end that you have to complete, a um, completion report. I'm kind of redundant, but yeah. Um, that I will ask for, you will, you will submit afterwards about how you did things, um, was the purpose met, was the intent met, all of that. So um, that will be something that you'll have to wrap up with afterwards. Speaking of you know, what you just said a minute ago, if it's a youth project, go with the youth grant. Some of the restrictions on the youth grants for excellence are that you cannot apply for a new computer, and that's our specific reasons. If you're getting a 3D mm -hmm. printer and you need a laptop to work with it, then you know it's, it's more open. special case. Yeah, special case. But if the if the computers in your children's area are old and you want a new computer, the youth grants won't do that. And I don't know with the uh, um we have had some people apply for um equipment. Generally that's not what the purpose of it is it for no. Okay. Um most people apply for extra kinds of equipment like um re microphone readers. I know we did yeah. the all computers for a while. For a while and yeah. Those also don't really furniture. Yeah. These grants won't buy you furniture. Mm -hmm. You can buy the furniture and apply that to your match. Yeah. If you need special you furniture need a, yeah. a desk or if you want yeah. to, yeah. But you can't use the grant money to pay for mm -hmm. the furniture yeah. or food. Sorry. Yeah, food is not something. So if you're going to have treats or snacks at any of these events, the same thing here, that would not be part of your budget. It's the actual. The local match. That, right. That would come from the local. So that's not money we would give you. That's not something we would give you money for. That's something you would provide and say, we are going to provide the snacks for the team gaming event and the grant, the youth grant will apply will provide the actual equipment in the game. Yeah. yeah. We're doing good. Yeah. Any questions about the library improvement grants? No, any questions about the internship grants before we jump on? Uh, something else I'll mention about the internship grants that I didn't while I was on there. There are various um, surveys and forms um, that go along with the internship grant as well. A startup, um, a, a, and it will be a document you'll be sent afterwards. There's a form for uh, your intern to say how they, um, what they think at the beginning of the grant program. What do I know about libraries? And I learned, you know, do I think I'm going to be doing here? And then a, a wrap up one afterwards showing how hopefully, hopefully <laughs> showing they learned something and they know something now about what libraries are all about. So there's going to be some, um, uh, this one has, I think, the most paperwork involved as far as surveys and things you have to submit. Yeah. Um, but it's not paper paperwork, it's go to an online form and answer the questions. The supervisor does, the intern does um, at the beginning and at the end. Um, I know for the um, youth ones, they have to, and for the library improvement, they have to submit um, receipts yeah. afterwards and then they get the reimbursement type thing, is that correct? And another thing to say is when you submit your receipts, Submit all the receipts because you need to show me that you did spend your local match amount. Mm -hmm. Sometimes right. people just send me enough to cover the grant and I have to call them and say, um, I need a little bit more. Oh, yeah, I had those other ones. I just thought I only needed this much. Yeah, yeah. No, because submit everything, yeah. The library improvement and use also, it is you do have to put out the money and then you submit the receipts and then reimburse you. Internship is the opposite. You request the funding for the the site and the money to pay whenever you want to and we send it to you ahead of time because then you can decide how you're going to pay the person. Like I said, if you're going to have it be a salary, you'll pay them out as a salary. If you're going to pay them at the end of their time, some, some, sometimes they pay halfway through the internship and then 50% of it and halfway through afterwards. So that one you request you get it beforehand because there isn't anything to really submit to me saying here, you know, we give it to you first and then you just say yes, we paid them. <coughs> Um, we do have a question here about the internship grant. You mentioned high school or college um, for the internship grant. Is there a minimum age? Um, there's actually is information here about that, that you can have someone who is underage, and there are specific rules in Nebraska about, um, I think we've had 16, 15-year-olds. There's some... Um, uh, 
here we go. Underage requirements. Um, and there is a form here under 16. It's, it's going to you can have um, younger kids. It'd be up to you to decide how young you think they can do what you want them to do. But there are requirements about what the how what hours they can work and how long they can work if they're under 16. So that's going to be up to you. Um, there is no minimum, but you know this is a paid internship, so do think about what you're going to be having them do. And there is a form for you to fill out at the from the Department of Labor about age requirements. So um, look into that. Yeah, I can't imagine you want anybody too young, but you know, children that they mature, everyone matures at a different rate. So your choice. But do be aware of what you will have to do something different of uh, how they can be paid, how they are paid, and what hours they work if they're under 16. All right. So our final grant, which is the last one due in December, is this Continuing Education and Training Grant. And I will hand it over to Holly to tell you guys all about what we're doing with this year. And this will be super quick. Yeah, well. <laughs> uh, no, it's fine, because this, this year, it is, yeah. um, we're just, oh, Hmm? What? Nothing. Okay. Um, so this year we are just doing for CE grants. There it is. Um, we are focusing on the ARSL conference in 2020. They're going to be in um, Wichita, Kansas next year, September 30th to October 3rd. Um, since this year's conference was just last week, they don't have a whole lot of information on their website yet, but they do have this little Nice. preview mm -hmm. um, about Wichita and, and where it's going to be. Um, the last two years, the conference is sold out, but they said that this year it's at a much bigger yeah. venue, so that shouldn't be a problem this year at all. Um, and Krista said that their theme this year is SOAR. SOAR so with, libraries, with libraries, I think is what it is, yes. And um, Wichita is um, like the home of Boeing, and there's a lot of aviation-related yeah. things happening about Wichita. So that's their theme, SOAR with libraries. And SOAR is an acronym for something that I cannot remember. I was at the ARSL mm -hmm. conference last week, and I can't remember it. Something about services are, and yeah. yeah. Well, now that yeah. this year's conference is over, there'll be probably there'll be more, more information more. coming that's about true. it. But, so we're thinking way ahead of time. But, um, but registration usually is in the spring yeah, for it, yeah, right? It's pretty early. Yeah. So the idea of this is since it is so close that we want to promote this, and it's, a, it's an excellent conference. Oh, yeah. Um, and so we are trying to get as many Nebraska librarians there as we can. Um, each grant recipient will be reimbursed up to $500. Um, this can cover the registration costs, pre-conference registration, but that doesn't include any like tours or networking, social kind of events, mm -hmm. um, meals, mileage, and lodging. And ARSL is great because I know you know it says meals not covered by registration. Yeah. ARSL is actually provided with quite a bit of the meal. Yeah. Um, every day of the conference there is lunch, breakfast and lunch is provided. So really the only meals you have to figure out is on your own is dinners. Dinners are the day you're traveling maybe. Right, your travel days if it's before. Like yeah, I had to travel before the conference started just because. It's hard to get from Lincoln to Vermont <laughs> in, in a quick way So this year. But going down to Kansas, it's just yeah. like, like from here, it's like a three-hour drive or something okay. to Wichita. You know, it depends on where you're coming from in the states. So, um, yeah, so a lot of the meals are included in your registration cost at ARSL, so that's a really nice thing. And they do offer, um, they do ask about your, any sort of dietary requirements you may have, and they will include that. Um, so this application is due December 13th. Uh, let's see. And then... If you get the grant, then I'll send more information about how to request reimbursement in that paperwork. Um, but the application is down here. And it's pretty short, pretty basic. Um, your information and then just why you want to attend this conference, what do you think you'll learn out of it, um, how is this going to help you provide better service to your libraries. So it's something more than just, I want to go, it sounds fun. <laughs> I it's want to close. see people. Yeah. <laughs> so just All of those things will learn. happen, but yeah, <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah. We assume that's hopefully happening, <laughs> but why this particular conference? 
and then your estimated expenses, obviously um, your mileage or lodging, it might be different once they announce mm -hmm. different costs. Um, hopefully yeah. they'll start announcing some of that soon, but you can get an idea of different, you can go to the different travel sites and um, you get some estimated costs and mm -hmm. again, and then just submit. Um, yeah, and I think this too is, I mean, you're going to be putting in here what it, things might cost. Yeah. The 500 is not going to cover everything necessarily, and that's okay. Probably not. It probably won't. Um, whatever registration is in your hotel for however many days. This is a, a longer-ish conference. It's like this year, mm -hmm. there was a pre-conference, and then two and a half days of full sessions. Yeah. Um, so it's, if you're doing the whole thing, you've got four days worth of being there and all of those you know, associated nights. Yeah, that's true. Um, but the 500 will help you get there. Mm -hmm. um, Something else that was um, to mention about this, and I'm sorry I'm jumping in, but no, I know this because I haven't talked to you. Um, our regional library systems here in Nebraska do off offer grants um, for continuing education and scholarship grants to attend conferences as well. And if you want to apply for them, you can, as they say, stack. I mean, yeah. you can apply for this grant from us for 500 and then one from one of whichever regional system you're in and have both of those. Yeah. To help you pay for the, um, you know, cover even more of the cost. That is, um, that is okay. Uh, some theirs are usually, well, it varies. Um, sometimes they're smaller amounts, um, depending also on what they're giving them for. Two hundred fifty, a hundred dollars, whatever. But you know, every little bit helps. But you are all, all allowed to apply for more than one. So look and see what your systems are offering as well, um, to see if that will help you. As well for this. For ARSL, they also offer scholarships themselves. Yeah, okay. <laughs> there's lots of there's lots of ways to get to the to an ARSL conference. And I don't know if we mentioned ARSL associate was on the page Association for Rural and Small Libraries. So this is a conference really focused on like what 95 percent of our libraries in the state, the smaller um, libraries. Um, and you can look on their website at past conferences. Oh yeah, you can see the kind of examples things. of sessions and keynote speakers that yeah. they had, and kind of get an idea of what might. Be there might be might be coming. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, oh, so we have a comment from Tammy. Um, from Joe. I got one of the Air Cell scholarships two years ago. Apply. <laughs> she says, yeah. So absolutely. Uh, you know, go for that when they when they, they announce theirs yeah. too. Yeah. So then the only other part of the application again is we'll need um, a support form. Just who's applying? Library. Um, if you're the director, you'll have your board president sign it. If you're staff or librarian, you'll have your director sign it. Um, and each each applicant should fill out the application themselves um, because we'll need that little description of why you would like to attend. So, um, so a director shouldn't apply for all of their staff. Please. No, please not directors. We've had too many confusion, too much confusion about that. And the director does on behalf of the person going in, and the person going doesn't know yeah. what's being written or. <laughs> yeah. And they'll need to explain why they want to attend. Yeah. So do it for yourself, but you know, keep in, con in communication with your director yeah. about it. Yes. Yeah. And directors encourage your staff to apply. Yeah. Um, yes, more than one person from the same library can get this as well, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, it's, there's no yeah, restrictions no or rules about that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We'll be giving them out until we run out of the money. Please let us <laughs> um, the last time we did this uh, was when we dedicated the entire CE grant to, and it was also for ARSL, was in 2013 when, if some of you remember, it was right in Omaha, actually. Mm -hmm. And at that time, we gave out 40 grants. There's 40 people. So mm -hmm. we're hoping to get at least that much when we're just driving down to Kansas this time. Yeah. We've got the money set aside for you for this. So. Yeah. Please. <laughs> Anything else? No. Unless somebody has questions. Anybody have any questions? Do you want to ask about any of the grants that we have here? Come back. We're do giving out this year. So that's the main grant stage. Mm -hmm. I thought you wanted my coffee. No, I want my own <laughs> coffee. I would never take someone else's coffee. No. <laughs> so any questions you have now, you've got us all here. Type in the question section and tell us if you want to use your microphone. Um, just to summarize, first up, youth grants due September 30th. Questions and comments, Sally. Next up, internship grants due October 16th. That would be me. 
Library Improvement Grants do November 13th, also me, and then the last one for this year, December 13th, the CE grants to attend ARSL in Kansas. Talk to Holly. Um, okay, so a question came in and I'm not sure. Can cash match for a library improvement grant be from a different grant? Um, if it is not a federally funded grant. Mm, okay. So if you have no a federal community funds to help pay organization cover. that gives grants to, mm -hmm. so it might right. be a business or that's okay. But if it's federal money, it cannot be the match. So yes, but not another federal grant. Something else. I happen to know that. Yes. Good question. Yeah. There are lots and lots of grants out there. Um, and we have more information on our page about other grants that are available, and I'm planning on trying to update that too as well. Other funding sources, we've got a few here, but um, a quick Google search for grants for libraries, you'll find some um, all sorts of things. But you gotta get a little creative too. Like you said, look community um, places that may just give grants for public entities, you know, because you are a public library. Yeah. And there's the are the Dollar General grants. Oh yeah. Mm -hmm. like that. Dollar General target fund grants before. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Walmart maybe I can't remember. Yeah. So yeah. Yes, with restrictions. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Any other questions you have right now? Like I said, we've got we've we've worked really hard to set aside money and to to amongst ourselves negotiate with each other <laughs> um, to be able to offer all four of our grants this year, and we're hoping that'll be an ongoing thing that we'll be able to keep doing. Um, but we need you guys to apply. We have money. We want to give it away. This is what it's for. Just a few restrictions. Yeah. Forms to fill out. Yeah. Form. Report. Yeah. Um, Oh, goodness, yes. Okay, it's a great question. Um, you had mentioned that for the intern grant, minimum wage is a requirement. Is that a minimum or can the library pay the intern more with the money? Oh, yeah, you can pay them more per hour if you want to. Yeah, we're just giving you, you just have to make sure that his, the hourly wage, when, they, when you do up all the math of how many hours they worked compared to the $1,000 we gave you, that it did come up to be the minimum wage. But if you want to pay them more per hour, um, so then it would be for that $1,000 they work Fewer hours, right, yes. Less hours for more per hour, absolutely, yes. That's up to you to decide how much you want to pay the um, to, your, to your intern. But just make sure you meet that minimum, yeah. That brings up something I didn't mention before, at least to me, is in your local match for the Youth Grants for Excellence, there is a cash requirement of a certain percentage, and then there's also the equi equivalent in um, like staff time that's dedicated to that project. So when you are figuring that out, it's similar. Mm -hmm. It's um, how many hours you worked on um, being there for the gaming session, planning the gaming sessions, being right. there for the gaming sessions. Planning, organizing. Yeah. yeah. Organizing. And then um, those hours times your hourly salary equals X amount of dollars. That cannot be paid from the grant. It has to be the local match, so sometimes people, and you can put in more. You can say, you know what, this is what I really worked on that, <laughs> and, and here's okay. what, and I just want you to know that. That's fine, as long as you meet the minimum. Yeah. You yeah. have to meet the minimum. Yeah. And so, thought I'd just mention that, too. Yeah. Should know. Yeah. All right, and so this is thanks, ladies, lots of great information. Good, we hope you That was the idea. Yeah, get the fell out there for you. All right. Any other questions? Anything last minute you want to ask us before we wrap up for today? You guys all know where to contact us. Call the Library Commission and ask for either one of us, depending on which grant that you're interested in, and we'll help you. Um, we can give you advice, get you going on it. Um, that's okay. There's no rules about don't talk to us ahead of time. <laughs> we want to give away this money, so we will help you fill out the grant, yeah. the application, um, the best way you can, so that we can um, send the money out. Yeah. I've talked with people on the phone and does that same thing. Say, well, how should I explain this? Here's what I want to do. And then mm -hmm. yeah, we'll hash it out with you. And then when work. my team looks at the application, mm -hmm. I recruit myself. They, the rest of the sure. team makes the decision because I've helped 
input. Write it a little yeah. too much, yeah. <laughs> and, and I'm happy to help you with that. Yeah. Also, your system administrator might oh, help absolutely. you if you want to mm -hmm. run something. Just show them yeah. what you've written and see what they say. Mm -hmm. It really helps to clarify what it is you're trying to communicate to us. Having another pair of eyes on what you've written always helps, yeah, for all of them. All right. Well, at 10 after, I think we'll wrap it up then. Yeah. Um, look at our web pages. Uh, start apl um, apply for all of these. Um, get that uh, youth one, and you've got to the end of this month um, for that one. So. I am going to go to the Encompass Live website, which is actually on our website under our education and training. Or you can also use the search engine of your choice and Google Encompass Live and you will find us. Um, and I'll show you here while I'm here. These are upcoming shows, but this is where the archive for today's show will be in addition to being posted at the top of that our grant page, as I said. Um, our, our, in, our archives are all here. It'll be at the top of the list. We'll have um, a link to the recording. Hopefully by the end of the day today, as long as YouTube and GoToWebinar and everybody cooperates, <laughs> um, all of you who attended and who registered for today's show will get an email from me letting you know that it's ready. Um, we also push it out onto our uh, mailing list and social media, Twitter, Facebook, all the places out there so that you know that it's available. Um, I'll also mention while we're here on the archives, this is, uh, as you can see here with a search feature, this is the archives going all the way back to the beginning of Encompass Live. Encompass Live started in January 2009, so we're in... 11th year? Yeah. Um, it's been a long time. But we have all of our archives here. If I scrolled all the way down, you'd see those original shows. So um, we have set the search so that you can do the search the entire archives, or if you want to, just most recent 12 months, you want something really, some real current information. Um, if you do search all the archives or any of these, just pay attention to the date when something was originally broadcast. There will be some things on here that and everything has a date of the original date. Um, there will be things in here where the service doesn't exist anymore, the links might be broken, the, um, the service might have changed completely. Uh, so, you know, just pay attention to what date we originally put these out. Um, but we are librarians, so what we do, we archive things for historical purposes. As long as, you know, YouTube is out there and we're, uh, there's always be out there for you to look at. So um, just pay attention when you're watching something to how old it is. And depending. Some of them um, stand, up, stand the test of time. Perfectly fine. Not all. <laughs> we do have a Facebook page for Encompass Live. So if you are a big Facebook user, give us a like over there. We post on reminders. Here's a reminder to log into today's show. Um, or my, we let, announce on here when the recordings are available. No, I don't want to log in right now. Um, when upcoming shows are coming up. So um, if you do like to use Facebook to keep up with things, give us a like over there and you'll see um, what we're doing with the show. I uh, hope you join us next week then when we were talking about um, the Coretta Scott King Book Awards, 50 years of these book awards being done. Um, the American Library Association um, you know, does the awards every year, and this year, 2019, is the 50th anniversary of the um, Coretta Scott King Book Awards. And Alan Bailey, who is from the East Carolina, East Carolina University and is part of the team that um, picks and awards these is going to be with us next week to talk about them and what they're doing this year, what they've been doing for celebrating, um, hopefully things that you can do. You know, we are in September, but there's still lots of 2019 okay. left that you can do to um, celebrate them a little bit more in your library. So please do sign up and join us for that show. We also have our other upcoming shows here. I'm starting to get some more October, November dates filled in. Keep an eye on that for the open dates. I'm negotiating with people. Uh, and do be aware, uh, October 2nd is the one week we, we do the show every week except the week of our state annual conference um, the Nebraska Library Association annual conference this year it is um, the first week in October It is actually a joint Iowa conference with um, the Nebraska Library Association Iowa Library Association and uh, Nebraska School Librarians Association yeah <laughs> um, so we're doing a joint conference with them so that's the one week we'll be off no encompass live that week enjoy the, the uh, conference up in La Vista and um, uh, Network with some of your Iowa co library colleagues. Should be a fun day. Right. All right. So that wraps it up for today. Doesn't look like we have any other desperate questions. Thank you, everyone, for being here. Thank you, Sally and Holly, for uh, talking about our grants. Uh, send in those applications. We have money to give away. All right. And we'll see you next time on Encompass Live.
Thanks. Bye-bye.